Hey, what's up? People Piz out here, and today I want to talk to you guys about 1981's An American Werewolf in London. Now, this is partially going to be a review of the movie as well as a review of this upcoming limited edition Blu-ray release from Arrow Video. And what can I say about An American Werewolf in London that's not already been said? This is one of the great werewolf movies that the horror genre has to offer. Now, granted, there's not a lot of depth in that field, but still, American Werewolf in London is at the very tippy top of the werewolf movie list. This is just a great film on virtually every level, from a technical point of view to a character point of view to a storytelling point of view. The soundtrack is fantastic. You've got lots of blood and gore in this movie, and you've got the werewolf transformations courtesy of rick baker and his crew and when most people think of an american werewolf in london that's exactly what they think of they think of that groundbreaking breathtaking transformation sequence that really defied all of the special makeup effects rules it's shot in bright light the camera lingers over the effects and they look phenomenal and they still look phenomenal even today nearly 40 years later and watching a movie like this and i've watched it so many times it just proves again and again and again how much better practical makeup effects are watching david naughton's character in this film transform into a werewolf it's almost like <laughs> it's almost like a a movie in and of itself Watching his body transform, watching his hand lengthen and curl into claws, watching his, his feet extend into paws, watching his face elongate into a snout. It looks so awesome, and yet it sounds <laughs> and feels so painful. David Naughton's performance during the transformation is also it's overlooked oftentimes, but it's a great performance because he's in the in werewolf movies really up to that point. You didn't have great transformations, but in an American werewolf in London, you really get that sense of a human person whose body is bending and twisting and changing shape to that of a large, evil, ravenous demon from hell werewolf and it is clearly a very very painful process but the stunning practical makeup effects in an american werewolf in london aside this is just a great film from a storytelling point of view from a character point of view it's the kind of movie that that mixes genres but does so in such an effortless kind of way that you can you can forget that just a moment ago you were watching the werewolf you know stalk this poor guy in the underground of the uh you know the london subways to the next minute you're laughing because you're watching david Naughton run around in public naked because he's woke up the next morning in the zoo in the wolf habitat so the movie does such an excellent job of mixing horror and humor. And there's some some dark humor uh, a lot of the times. But there's also a heart to this film. You like David Naughton's character. You feel for David Naughton's character. You want him to overcome this curse. And yet you know it's not going to end well. And I love the very abrupt ending of an American werewolf in London. The film also adds a little bit to the werewolf lore. I love how all of David Naughton's character's victims are like cursed along with him, but they're cursed to wander in this oblivion where they're kind of haunting him and they're going through various stages of decay while they're haunting him and there's a great sequence inside an adult theater in which they're all gathered there and they're trying to convince him to commit suicide so that a it will end the werewolf curse and b they will all be released 
and they're going, well, what about a knife? What about a gun? What about, what if you jump in front of a train? What if you do, <laughs> what if you do this? And, and they're, they're telling, they're suggesting ways for him to off himself and they're doing it in such a gleeful <laughs> a kind of way. The supporting performances in this film are fantastic. Griffin Dunn, who is David Naughton's character's best friend in the film, his doomed best friend in the film, who he was the lucky one in that when they encountered the werewolf on the moors, <clears throat> because they decided to go backpacking through Europe and they found themselves backpacking through the moors of in London on the wrong night, because that night just happened to be a full moon and Griffin Dun Griffin Dunn's character dies while David Naughton's character just gets attacked and and bitten by the wolf Griffin Dunn's character appears to him as this at first this just really bloody messed up you know specter and then the more he appears to him throughout the film the more decayed <laughs> he becomes but he he supplies a lot of really uh, great dark humor in this film as well. Also, Jenia Gutter is fantastic in this film as a nurse. She delivers a really good, kind of heartbreaking and, and sad performance because she falls in love with David Naughton's character. And again, you just know it's not going to end well. And <clears throat> there is a sadness, and that adds to the the sad aspects of this movie. This movie hits you from all angles. You've got the horror aspects, you've got the humor aspects, but then you also have sort of sad moments. There's a great moment in which David Naughton's character is in a uh, phone booth and he realizes that, you know, he, he, he can't do this. He can't be the werewolf anymore. He wants to be freed of the curse. He wants to free his victims from their own curses. So he calls home and he talks to like his, his younger sister, and he's telling her to, you know, stay out of trouble and to tell mom and dad that he loves them and, you know, he loves her too. And there's, there's a humor to that sequence, but there's also, I don't know, there's just also kind of a, a, a sadness to that sequence. If you've not seen An American Werewolf in London, I highly, highly recommend it. This is one of, if not the very best werewolf movies ever made hands down. If you've not seen the film, go out, see it. This Blu-ray from Arrow Video would be a great way to introduce yourself to the film. If you're a fan of An American Werewolf in London, you definitely want to look into picking up this Blu-ray release from Arrow Video and adding it to your collection. First, let's check out the presentation. This release features some very nice new artwork. And on the back of the box, we have a five-pointed star. Everything comes inside this very nice sturdy feeling case here made of thick uh, pretty durable cardboard which is always nice the blu-ray case itself features the same artwork that is on the box however the sleeve is reversible and on the reverse of the sleeve you have the poster art for the film at least the u.s poster art for an american werewolf in london this release also comes with six lobby card reproductions We get a very nice, thick booklet featuring three write-ups about an American werewolf in London, as well as a lot of really nice color images from the film. And lastly, this release comes with a double-sided poster. On one side, we have the new artwork, which is featured on the cover of the Blu-ray release. On the reverse, we have what I do believe is the original uh, UK poster art for An American Werewolf in London. As far as the picture quality and sound quality on this release, this release features a new 2019 restoration from the original camera negative supervised by John Landis. The picture quality on this release I thought looked really good. I would give it a solid four out of five. Uh, the picture quality had that great kind of film grain look to it. It didn't look, 
the only word that comes to mind is digitized where they go into an older film like this and they, they clean it up a little too much and they make it look almost like it was shot, you know, on digital. Um, this, you can definitely tell this film was shot on film. It's got that great film grain look to it. It is a little overly grainy in some of the darker sequences, however, but I thought the film looked great on this release. The audio quality also, I'd give a solid 4 out of 5 to. I listened to it with both the Mono 1.0 and the 5.1, and I thought both sounded absolutely fantastic. So I'd give the picture quality a 4 out of 5 and the audio quality a 4 out of 5 for this release. As far as extras are concerned... First up, we have Mark of the Beast, the legacy of the Universal Werewolf. It's one hour, 17 minutes, and 18 seconds in length. It is a newly produced feature-length documentary by Daniel Griffith, featuring interviews with John Landis, Peter Atkins, Steve Haberman, uh, Mike Hill, C. Courtney Joyner, Craig Reardon, Mick Garris, Joe Dante, Justin Humphrey, Steve Johnson, David Naughton, and many more. They discuss the werewolf folklore throughout history and literature and the werewolf myths uh, eventually making their way in, onto the silver screen with uh, the werewolf of London and of course the wolfman and they discuss how the wolfman created the archetypes of the gypsy curse, the silver bullets and so on. Uh, they discuss the makeup and transformation techniques used to turn Lon Chaney Jr. and Henry Hall into werewolves. They discuss the universal monster mashups and the decline of the universal monsters, their resurgence on television and how Hammer picked the ball up and remade a lot of the universal monster movies including The Curse of the Werewolf. Landis discusses his decision to set American Werewolf in London in London. Uh, they discuss the transformation effects in the American Werewolf in London and much more. Very nice, informative, in-depth documentary here about werewolf folklore, werewolves in cinema, and more. Very nice documentary. Next up, we have an American filmmaker in London, a new interview with John Landis, in which he reflects on British cinema and his time working in Britain. It's 11 minutes and 41 seconds in length. Mr. Landis discusses his love of British cinema and working in Britain with British cast and crew members. Next up, we get Wares of the Wolf, in which special effects artist Dan Martin and Tim Laws look at some of the costumes and special effects artifacts from An American Werewolf in London. It's 7 minutes and 58 seconds in length. We get to take a look at one of the red puffer jackets used in the film. We get to see one of the heads of the Nazi werewolves used in the dream sequence. Uh, and we get one of the change heads uh, used during the werewolf transformation, which still actually works. It has like some servos and stuff in it that still work and it's that was pretty cool uh next up we get i think he's a jew the werewolf's secret it's 11 minutes and 26 seconds in length it's a new video essay by john spira about how american werewolf in london explores jewish identity very interesting Next up, we have The Werewolf's Call, in which Corin Hardy, director of The Hollow and the Nun, chats with writer Simon Ward about their formative experiences with An American Werewolf in London. It's 11 minutes and 26 seconds in length. Mr. Ward and Mr. Hardy discuss their first impressions of An American Werewolf, how the film balanced humor and horror, and how the film's effects inspired the creative uh, or the creature designs in The Hollow and more. Next up, we have Beware the Moon, Paul Davis's feature-length documentary on An American Werewolf in London. It's one hour, 37 minutes, and 39 seconds in length. It includes interviews with Jenny Agutter, David Schofield, Rick Baker, John Woodvine, David Naughton, John Landis, and many more. This is the really cool, super informative documentary about the film. Basically, everything that you could possibly want to know about An American Werewolf in London is on this documentary. Great, great stuff. Next up, we have Making an American Werewolf in London. It's four minutes and 54 seconds in length. It's a vintage making of, featuring an interview with John Landis, and it includes some very nice behind-the-scenes footage from An American Werewolf in London. Next up, we have an interview with John Landis. It's 18 minutes and 19 seconds in length. It features interview clips with John Landis directed by Adam Simon, which was part of a longer interview with Mr. Landis that you can also see on Adam Simon. Simon's brilliant documentary, The American Nightmare, which I did a review for not long ago. I'll post a link to it around here somewhere. Go check that out. Next up, we get Rick Baker on An American Werewolf in London. It's 11 minutes and 13 seconds in length. Mr. Baker discusses creating the makeup and mechanical effects in the film, including how 
how he made the wolf a quadruped, Griffin Dunn's makeup, and the transformation with lots of unused footage for from the film as sort of a, a reference point. Next up, we get I Walked with a Werewolf, an archival interview with Rick Baker about universal horror and its legacy of Wolfman films. It's 7 minutes and 30 seconds in length. Next up, we get Casting the Hand, archival footage of Rick Baker's workshop as they cast David Naughton's hand. It's 10 minutes and 59 seconds in length. We get 3 minutes and 7 seconds of outtakes. We get a storyboard featurette, which is 2 minutes and 27 seconds in length. We get original trailers, and we get a pretty extensive uh, image gallery. We also have two commentaries on this film, uh, one commentary with Paul Davis, the director of the Beware the Moon documentary, and the other commentary is with David Naughton and Griffin Dunn. I listened to about half the movie with Mr. Davis's commentary and the other half with Mr. Naughton and Mr. Dunn's commentary. Uh, Mr. Davis is very informative when it comes to his commentary for the film, uh, as you would suspect since he directed the Beware the Moon documentary. Uh, very nice uh, commentary with Mr. Davis, at least for about half of the film that I watched with his commentary. The commentary with David Naughton and Griffin Dunn was also entertaining, although there were large gaps in which nothing was said. So there were long gaps of silences, and then the two would kind of start talking about a sequence or what was happening behind the scenes. Uh, when they are talking during this commentary, it is pretty entertaining, I do have to say. This is a loaded release for an American Werewolf in London from the fine folks over at Arrow Video. You've got a new restoration of the film, which looks great. You've got great sound quality, a great presentation here. You've got tons of extras on here, both new and archival. This is sort of the ultimate release of an American Werewolf in London. You get a poster, you get a booklet, you get some cards. It's, this is just a really, really nice set for an American Werewolf in London. I'll post a link to Arrow Video's website down in the description. Again, if you've not seen an American Werewolf in London, I cannot recommend it any higher. This Blu-ray release would be a great way to introduce yourself to the film. If you are a fan of an American Werewolf in London, you definitely want to look into picking up this release and adding it to your collection. Please let me know your thoughts on an American Werewolf in London down in the comments section below. Let me know what your favorite werewolf movie is down in the comments section below. If you like this video, please leave it a thumbs up. If you're not following me on social media, those links are in the description. They're also right around here. As always, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Hope you guys out there are all having a great, safe, healthy, happy, and horror movie-filled October. Take care, and until next time, peace. Join the A Buck A Month Club and help support my channel on Patreon. Thank you to my current patrons, Kevin Smythe, B-Movie Mike, Robert Sobel, Terry Delamore, Stephen Flanagan, Lori Holt, Craig Farrand, Farron Sutton, Jeremiah Lambert, Grindhouse Grotto, Derek Janna, Demon Waffles, Simon Clark, Stone Gassman, Zachary Barton, Lauren Dixon, James Welch, Eli Geisler, Jeff Overing, Pete Toll, Kyle McGuire, Jay the Stingray, Andrew McDonald, Dave Barnes, Jonathan Lundy, Chris Gonzalez, Trenton Bowser, Jason Breitenbach, Brandon Bizdick, Steak Sauce, OG Myers, Mark Striano, Jeff Gardner, Travis Davis, The Obsolutionist, Chris Earls, Kevin Fitzpatrick, Randall Beatty, and Joseph Hinkle. Say hello to the internet, Jeremy. Hello to the internet.